Creating a successful architectural floor plan is a result of your deep thinking, analyzing, and understanding your project. Keep watching to know how to produce a successful architectural floor plan. Hi everyone and welcome back to Tips with Mona. My name is Mona Abu Fayyad, I'm an architect and a designer. On this platform, I explain some architectural and designing content. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe, like, share, and hit the notifications bell on so you can get notified whenever I upload a new video. But for now, let's start our video. So in the previous videos, I started a series that explains how to develop an architectural concept. If you haven't watched these videos, I'll link them in the i-cards above. And today, I'm continuing this series by explaining how to develop a successful floor plan. So after understanding the design brief and producing bubble diagrams for the required program, and then studying the site analysis and totally understanding your building codes and your affection plan, we can now start producing architectural floor plans and drawings. But you have to keep in mind that you will always need to go back to your bubble diagrams, site analysis, building codes to make sure that you are following the requirements 100% because even after following these requirements, you might need to place some modifications to your design. You will always face these changes in your project no matter how much you follow the requirements and the needs of your project. Maybe you might change your mind in the design. Maybe your client's needs will change. Maybe after you apply it to the municipality, something gets rejected and you need to change something. You have to keep in mind that modifications can happen even at the last minute. But all you have to do is to follow the requirements so you can have less changes in the future. You can now open your drone to scale plot and maybe you can print it out and sketch over it or you can start sketching on any software that you feel that you are comfortable with to start sketching something to start translating the bubble diagram into drawings and to fulfill the requirements of the program and the requirements of the site that you have so now i'll remind you of the bubble diagrams and the site analysis that i did in the previous videos in a very quick way so this is the bubble diagram that i produced in the previous videos for my project and this is a translation of the design brief that i received from the client we have the requirements over here and this is the site analysis that I did for my site. Of course, this site analysis is only for my reference. No one's gonna see this site analysis except me. I did this site analysis just in order to understand my site and to fully absorb the information that I have in my site so I can take advantages of what I have and avoid any problems that I might face in the future, as well as the bubble diagram is also only for my personal information and understanding. You can sketch them, you can use whatever software you like. So these are the things that we need to keep looking at when we start producing our floor plan. And now it's time to show you how I understood my own bubble diagram and site analysis. And I produced floor plans for the project that I was handed. So I'll show you now. So I did this very quick floor plan. Of course, it might need more studying, more editing, more modifications, but this is very quick. So the entrance is from here, to enter from this door, and here we have the maid's room that they asked me for in the program, and living dining right here, and an open kitchen. And this is exactly what they asked me for. And then if you go out from here, you will find a terrace, three steps, and you will have your garden because they already asked for a garden. And then over here, if you can notice, we have the powder room, a storage, and a laundry room. I tried to take an advantage of the small corners that were resulting of this plan and to create the storage and laundry. And then if you take the stairs up, 
you will find a very small lobby and two doors. One of them is for the master bedroom, bathroom and an office and the other one is for the other bedroom with a bathroom. If we put the floor plan that I executed next to the public diagram, design brief and the site analysis, you will find that I tried my best to accomplish what's best for the project. Let's try to put them all together and understand. So this is the puddle diagram. They asked for an entrance that will allow you to take into the maids room, powder room, and then living dining with an easy access to the office kitchen. If we look at the plan together, you will see that I provided this entrance and then the powder and the maids room are at the very beginning so they are not interacting with the open space right here and there is an easy movement between the dining and the kitchen and between the living as well and there is an easy access to the terrace and garden right here so in this case i provided their needs in this floor plan if we go and look to the first floor we will see that they are requiring a small lobby two bedrooms and an office if you can notice i provided two bedrooms right here and an office to the parents room which is what they already asked for and now if we jump to the site analysis i'll try to explain to you what i did so this is our site analysis this is our north sign so the east is gonna be from this side from the right side if you open the floor plan you will see that our bedrooms now are here on the right so i located the bedrooms on the right side to get the best daylight from the east and also the best view from the tennis court right here we don't want to forget that i tried to align all the wet areas above each other to make the mep work easier for them and i don't want them to come in the future and change my design because they don't have shafts alignment so for that i tried to put this shaft and this shaft above each other and i tried to put the lpg shaft for the kitchen and we can also i provided spaces for the future shafts right here and maybe they won't need these shafts but i just thought about them and I provided spaces for these things so in the future they don't totally change my design I know there will be some modifications but I had to think about this stuff while designing producing a floor plan is never a one task thing you have to fully understand the information that are given to you in order to produce a very successful floor plan and a very strong one also you have to be aware that you might have to face some obstacles that will force you to modify your design these things can happen out of our hands but we have to deal with them and we have to find a path to manipulate these obstacles and to achieve the best for our client and for us for our client and for our project these obstacles might be for the sake of producing a better design so you don't have to worry when you face them you just have to find a way to solve them or maybe these obstacles are there just to achieve your client's needs at the end of the day we're here to achieve the client's needs and to follow our architectural ethics in both ways you will have an incredible project if you follow the steps that i explained in this series and don't forget, producing a successful project starts from here, from understanding the information that were given to you and by applying the needs of your client. So this is the end of our series. If you want me to talk about any other topic in your mind, just mention that in the comment section below. Other than that, thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, share, comment and hit the notifications bell on so you can get notified whenever I upload a video. But for now, see you in the next one. Bye!